Uh, thank you, Justin. Thank you, APAL, for inviting me again. And um, a little bit embarrassed about talking about this topic again because it's actually something that most of you probably have heard for before, whereas all the other presentations up until now have been something new also to myself. Um, before I start, I just wanted to answer maybe your question, the last question about the DPA contamination found uh, in the UK. We found in Europe, uh, we've stopped using DPA many years ago, but even now, some growers are getting rejections when it comes to certain countries uh, with DPA residue. Um, so they also couldn't explain, how is it possible? We haven't used it for seven, eight years. Why all of a sudden am I getting this kind of um, rejection? And they found that it was either coming from the cold stores themselves that still somehow had that residue getting into the fruit, but that would have been picked up in your case. Sometimes it's coming from the bins, but mainly what has happened is the MRLs have gone so low and the actual testing has become so advanced that they can actually spot those low levels. And that's why probably, I, I hope not, but what could have happened to you is that they wasn't picked up here where, where the contamination was actually already here, so it sh that fruit should have probably never left and would have cost you probably uh, less money. But um, back to my presentation. Um, we are based in Italy. I'm not going to go through all the uh, details of the um, DCA chlorophyll fluorescence system again because it's been said before. If any of you want more detail uh, about it, it's something that we can uh, provide you. I can email it to you. April, I have the presentation uh, from last year. Um, just in brief, the idea of our system is to get the maximum storage life out of the fruit, have the best possible quality, and obviously get to uh, oxygen levels that are so low where the oxidization process that then eventually creates the superficial scald can be avoided. Um, dynamic, why? Because the fruit is alive and uh, its uh, response to the oxygen uh, levels can change. Here you can see um, fruit um, in October responding, uh, sort of saying 0.85 is the limit I can go to. A few months later, it's 0.47. So that fruit in storage uh, changes its, uh, it, the level that it can actually uh, sustain. Uh, for people that haven't seen that before, this is uh, what the system kind of looks like in, in, in real. You have a sample of fruit, um, a um, sensor that goes on top, and that is what's monitoring the chlorophyll fluorescence by stimulating the fruit with uh, light impulses. Very important is choosing your sample fruit. Uh, you're looking at rooms that vary from uh, 150 tons to 1,200 tons in some cases uh, to find 12, 18 apples that represent that whole room uh, seems impossible and seems a tall story, but it's actually what is happening. Um, in Europe, we used to think there wasn't enough uh, using only such a small amount of um, samples, but experience has shown that we've actually gone from six sensors per room down to three, uh, in some cases two. We place, uh, for best practice point of view, we place our sample fruit within the other fruit uh, bins so that it actually sits in, a, in an atmosphere like your other fruits would be, so it tries to represent that uh, where the fruit is um, placed in the best possible way. Important is to keep some of the sample fruit also as your sample fruit that you're pulling out of the room um, in certain uh, intervals to check that it's all okay. There's no point in having fruit in a kennel giving you information on a computer system where you can't actually have the same kind of sample fruit that you can physically uh, look at and test and see how it evolves. There are support protocols for various varieties, both of apples and pears, that we provide our customers with. Uh, we have found that a lot of these protocols can actually be applied even if you're not using the DCA system and are helping uh, some users and growers to have better outturns of their products. Some varieties, it's a little bit more complicated, but that's because that fruit and that variety is more complicated. Um, 
suggestions of CO2 tables, again, that is something that is provided to the user. And just for those who, for pairs, uh, something similar again. This is what it would look on the computer screen. Your, the, the red line doing the steps is the oxygen level going down. The colored lines uh, going up and down on the bottom are the actual fluorescent sensors. You can see that at one point in time, they all go up. That's the actual fruit saying, not enough oxygen. I'm going to start an anaerobic respiration process and uh, you need to give me more oxygen, at which point we actually correct. The, we, we raise the level of oxygen a little bit higher and the fruit calms down. This is the first step that you would do to set your initial storage parameters. The system continuously monitors that fruit. So eventually, that can actually change during the season. In some cases, your fruit becomes less tolerant so you'll have to raise it again. Um, in other cases, like we saw before, uh, initially it's not so happy at uh, a higher level, but then it gradually acclimatizes and get, can go lower. So it's a very good system also to use as a, uh, let's say, an emergency or a, a secondary backup system. We've had instances where uh, an analyzer was showing 0.8% uh, oxygen. Uh, the customer had wanted to go lower, uh, was complaining that the, the level of oxygen was not going down in his room. On a secondary analysis with a portable analyzer, we noticed that customer was actually at zero, and that's why the system was spiking. So it's something that can, uh, can be a very, very good backup. In the United States, we also saw it, uh, the fruit reacting to um, ammonia leak before the ammonia detection system did. And in the UK, we've noticed it working very well to detect uh, chilling sensitivity. So when the temperatures was too low, it was actually reacting to it. It's been around, like Virginia was saying, since 2003 was the first commercial room, but let's say 2004 internationally, uh, pretty much everywhere where you grow apples and pears. Um, the global, uh, let's say, trend, the most interesting for, from your point of view would be uh, the U.S., how the growth has become more and more, uh, it's become quite big. This is something that is going to grow even more exponentially because it's driven by the organic um, uh, push of that uh, market. And uh, they are building new rooms to be DPA-free, and they are putting in plastic bins, and they are using this system to be able to have that uh, organic certification and uh, no cross-contamination. Another interesting uh, country where DCA has grown uh, in the last few years, uh, like Australia has, is the UK. Um, why, is this, um, uh, why is this very interesting for you? Because the UK uh, is one of these markets that traditionally has been importing a lot of fruit. Uh, but they've also been planting a lot of their own fruit. And uh, the local retailers are saying to the growers, you can grow very good fruit here, and you've been good at it, and we can market that fruit much better than anything that is important. But customer needs to be satisfied. So the gala that we are selling in October needs to be just as good when we are selling it in March. And because of the old-fashioned cold stores they had, the lack of controlled atmosphere or very poor controlled atmosphere they had, they could not get that quality. And now with the DCA levels that they are being able to use, uh, they are having very, very good results. Customers are very, very happy. Retailers are happy. And they've reduced a lot of their imports. And, uh, and why is this important? Because uh, I remember telling... Uh, some French customers of mine before then, be careful, you are selling a lot of your fruit to the UK. These guys are not going to be buying your fruit forever. If they can buy, sell something with a Union Jack on it, people will buy it. They'd much rather buy an English-grown apple than a French-grown apple. You've got to raise your game. And they didn't. And now the result is that a lot of French companies are not selling anymore to the UK because the UK have adapted the technology and have grown. And the same will happen with New Zealand. New Zealand are only now starting to use DCA. Uh, 
mainly for two reasons. Uh, they are needing to supply the local market, some companies for 12 months, so they need a, a solution. But also they're exporting a lot of their fruit. And yes, up until now they've been more pick, pack and ship, but the volumes they're getting, the market instability that is um, created, the competition means that they're now realizing, hang on, we're going to have to keep hold of some of this fruit, keep it well, in order to export it at a, at a later date. So this has been quite, uh, quite interesting. The apple variety is stored uh, worldwide, as you can see, are pretty extensive. On the bottom there, you have all the countries uh, where this has been used. And you may come across countries like Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. You say, what the hell are these guys using DCA for? Well, these guys are producing a lot of fruit, very good fruit. Growing conditions are very good. They have no chemicals. They have no real money for those. But when they're building big investment cold storages, they're buying the best and the latest technology so that they can actually, in the future, export the fruit, which is what they're doing, uh, mainly uh, to Russia, but uh, also to, to other countries. Well, I won't dwell too much on this, A, because of very old slides, and also because uh, Virginia touched on this before. Obviously, our system is primarily there to inhibit uh, superficial scold. Pear varieties, which uh, is something very interesting for Australia and especially for Shepparton, um, because most of these here rooms here in Australia are used for pears still. There's this belief that it works on pears, it doesn't work on apples, but it's, before it was the, exactly the opposite way around. We've been doing pears since 2004, apples only since 2013. I won't go through much through that. Again, this is something that we can go through. Let's go talk about DCA in Australia because the time is running out. This is what I saw when I came to Australia in 2014. This was the CA equipment and some of the CA equipment is still around. It was terrible. It was an absolute nightmare considering people like we've mentioned Colin Little already twice. I'll mention him again. Uh, someone that had been doing so much work and important work on a controlled atmosphere uh, to come here and see this kind of setups was just mind blowing. I said, no wonder the uh, packouts are 60%, 70%. This is just uh, crazy. Uh, something that we hadn't seen for 20 years, these kind of setups. But uh, 2014, uh, we did a little presentation here in Shepparton, in, uh, in fact, in Murupna, in a pizza joint. We had to exhibit our machines in the sort of storage area where they kept the flowers. So one of the comments from the people was, why are they using CA? to store pizza flour as well. That's, they're not really using it, we're just uh, keeping it here to show. And, uh, and the result of this, um, of this meeting, which was also attended by Bob Pranch, was that we got our first customer using the first room in DCA. And that's what it shows here on the graph. 2014, one room. Now look what happened afterwards. 2015, 16, growing exponentially now. What you see, the blue line, is the actual uh, rooms that are using the chlorophyll fluorescent sensors. The orange lines are the rooms that are equipped with the CA equipment to be able to go to those low oxygen and, and CO2 levels, but that have not actually put in the, the sensors yet. But like you can see, that gap is going to close. Um, and it's a very, very uh, impressive growth. Obviously, it started here in Shepparton, but we've now fortunate to have a customer in uh, WA. And uh, let's see that this momentum keeps going and the people actually start using this DCA also for the, for the apples. Compared to the worldwide uptake of this technology, you can see we're now nearly 3,000 rooms. Um, Australia is just a little part of that. But uh, when it comes to pairs, number one. Only second place is uh, South Africa. And the results are showing. Um, I think from a retail point of view, the customers are very, very happy. The requirements, CA tents, bags or containers, whatever you want to use, uh, like Virginia said, yes, they have to be gas tight. Um, but to someone who, has, who says my rooms are not gas tight, I say the first thing is sort out your rooms. It's not an excuse saying, oh, my rooms are not gas tight. 
You've got to fix them. Otherwise, there's no point in even doing any controlled atmosphere, let alone DCA. Um, PSA nitrogen generators, new generation CO2 scrubbers that allow you to keep the oxygen low and uh, the CO2 low as well, and obviously the, the DCA system. And uh, practical advantages, obviously, are reducing costs, times, and uh, post-harvest chemicals. No risk of fermentation because you are, have that detection uh, mm -hmm. with the fruit telling you. Better fruit quality, it's very user-friendly, it's computerized, there's no real risk to the operator. And the photo in the bottom there, you'll see it clearer tomorrow. That's what CA stores look like in Shepparton now. So it's changed from those photos as before to this. Uh, this is something that we've actually received back from our customers here. This is not something that, even though it's been on these slides before, but the pack out has increased, the reduced rots and damage to fruit, uh, reduction of internal browning, um, and increased color, firmness, um, flavor retention, uh, just better quality of fruit, longer shelf life, and for the export and organic markets, uh, a must really. Moving forward, it's now been proven that you can save energy um, by using the system simply because the uh, respiration that is reduced, it's, there's less of heat, therefore less heat to be taken away. Uh, and people are using higher temperatures because they see that they can use a higher temperature um, uh, because they're going so low with the oxygen and that's kind of breaking that, uh, uh, breaking the, the fruit, the fruit uh, aging. Uh, new technologies are being incorporated into the system so that we can start getting data on color and firmness. So all that data coming from that fruit uh, yeah, this will be available. It's already been tested in laboratories. It's been tested commercially in some parts of the world. This is something that's going to happen uh, very soon also here. Again, giving you that information that, uh, like we had in the panel discussion before, will give the store operator uh, information they can pass on to uh, the retailer saying, hey, I've got fruit here that is starting to age and we need to do something about it. So, you know, let's think about try to sell this. Um, what's also happened is new products are being used. Uh, in New Zealand they have a big problem with a gold kiwi. It's very, very valuable, uh, but they don't have the experience and they don't know how to store it in, in, uh, in CA yet. They haven't found the right recipe yet. And this system actually is helping them determine the chili sensitivity and the sensitivity to CO2. Uh, and also one of the things that is important is the DCA uh, system is helping a lot of growers with their new varieties to find out what the best parameters are for storage, which is something they don't have because these varieties have not been around long enough. There hasn't been any research done, uh, and so they are going blind, really. 2019, we had a lot of Aussie visitors in Italy, and I hope uh, this year we have more of you coming because in November in Bolzano we have Interpoma happens twi every two years and is an uh, exhibition only for apples. Uh, so if you're in the apple game, you have to come. <laughs> you have no excuse. It's not fair that I always have to come over through here. That's it.